Hello and thanks for joining us today on City Talk. I'm Maria Soreo and joining us today as he does every month is our Mayor Eric Alegria. Mayor, thank you for being here today. Thank you. It's great to be with you, Maria. It's nice to be with you as well. So much to get to, but I want to start with our very successful 4th of July celebration. So great to have it this year considering we couldn't have it last year and I couldn't believe how many people were out, including your family. That's right. We, we, had, a, we had a great time, didn't we, Maria? We did. All of us that day. And uh, believe it or not, I guess about 2,500 people came through that, that day. Yeah. All the activities occurred. As you said, I, every year it's special, but this year it was particularly special because people just enjoyed being out there with I one think another. So. I could just see the camaraderie amongst the community. Um, really uh, that full that full day so it was wonderful to yeah, see. Yeah and you know kudos to the city staff for pulling this together so incredibly fast because you know I know that they couldn't do a lot of the things so they really once it was like yes go they pulled it together and I don't think those food trucks or the cattle corn guys stopped the entire day because nope, people we, were just so excited to be there. We kept them quite busy <laughs> and as you said a big shout out to staff it's yeah. not easy I don't think people fully realize sometimes the level of logistics that no. go into an activity like that but again, it was a wonderful day. We really got to celebrate uh, America. Now, what did your kids like the best? What did they enjoy the most? Uh, this year, they, you know, typically they like the watermelon roll. Oh, yeah. Uh, but this year, they did like all of the activities that we had, the bounce house, et cetera. Uh, so they had a, a wonderful time. And I think for some of your council members and your mayor pro tem had a wonderful time as well, as we're <laughs> yes, going to show. They, did. they <laughs> did their pie eating contest. It was quite a contest, it, Maria. It really was. And the belt, I mean, the, you know, it was winner take all. It was. It was kind of no holds barred. <laughs> but, but big tip of the hat to uh, Mayor Pro Tim Bradley yeah. and Councilman Crookshank, who for the second year He's uh, a champ. Had, a, had another, you know, very competitive pie eating contest. And if you didn't see it, Councilman Crookshank etched out a second win. He did, and we're actually going to run that show oh. so people will be able to see, see it everything. for a long time. Yeah, we'll put a couple of clips, but yeah, it was, um, they were really good sports and it was a lot of fun. They were. So, and they're trying to talk you into it next year. They, you know? they so. are. I don't know that they'll be successful, but uh, <laughs> but I, I, I respect their ability to eat with such speed. Oh my gosh, they're both so good at this. I think they practiced a few times, maybe. I think so. <laughs> All right, so really so much to get to today. Um, one of the topics I wanted to start with was the coyotes. I know this has really been such a huge issue with the residents, and um, you know, it, it, they're, they're fearful because they see them a lot more now. Where is kind of the city with dealing with that issue? Yes, yeah, so we've, we've had a, a coyote management plan in place for some time, mm -hmm. um, and it's been rather effective at helping us really cohabitate successfully with coyotes. But I would say not just locally here uh, in RPV or on the peninsula, but really throughout the region, we're starting to get many more reports of aggressive behavior by coyotes towards residents, uh, towards animals of residents, right. of course. Um, and I can tell you as mayor, I've heard lots and lots of examples in this last year. Um, and so in this most recent council meeting, our council discussed enhancing our existing coyote management plan to have a more targeted, aggressive approach towards aggressive coyotes. Okay. Um, and what, that does that could mean? Include, what does that mean exactly? That could include increased uh, trapping or culling or other activities to ensure that um, we, we address uh, more uh, aggressive coyotes as they're reported to us. Okay. That's been one of the challenges. Uh, we do get reports, we assess, and that activity will still continue. Um, but we just want to make sure that our residents can feel quite safe and comfortable in their own space. Do they see them more in different times of the year, or is this just something that's kind of come? It's, it seems at this point that it's really pretty consistent through, throughout the year with okay. lots of reports coming out. And we, we also learned through this experience just an opportunity to re-educate as well. So we're going to yeah. have a newsletter that's going to be dedicated specifically to coyotes, just sort right. of re-educating our public on, on what to do and not to feed them and that sort right. of thing. And uh, we want to make sure that everyone's fully aware of um, all of those uh, issues. And then uh, in addition to that public education campaign, we're going to have a public forum That's great. to give the public yet another opportunity, although we had certainly a lively one recently with our city council meeting, yes. to just kind of openly talk with our staff about coyotes and, um, and learn all that they can do to make sure we 
successfully cohabitate, but also to report when there's aggressive behavior by coyotes and, and how we're going to uh, respond to that. And I think that's so important, the education part of it, because people just don't know what to do and then they're fearful or, you know, what do I do, who do I call kind of situation. Absolutely. So it's, it's a, that's helpful. It's, it happens often. So um, we want to make sure people know exactly where to go and what to do and that we respond in a very timely fashion. Sounds good. Now, the new Park Mobile app is very exciting. I know you've been talking for a very long time with the council about the parking situation on, I believe it was Crest Boulevard or Crest Road and Crenshaw. Yes. With everybody going into the trails and so forth. So I know that you've finally come up with a plan. Tell us about this. It sounds amazing. Yes. Well, well uh, as you mentioned, Maria, we've we've uh, reviewed throughout really last fall and early part of this spring. Mm -hmm several steps that we could take to really ensure um, better protections for the neighborhood right next to those trailheads. Those are just real popular trailheads. They are. I understand why people want to use them, but I also understand that it's had real uh, difficult effect on the, the quality of life in that area. And so we've taken a number of steps to change hours and put up the gates and just make sure that it's managed properly. Correct. Uh, so we can balance access along with the, uh, the quality of life in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the Park Mobile app is just one of those uh, you know, recent steps that we're um, instituting. And it's going to turn all of those spaces at least along above, I should say, so south, mm -hmm. Crenshaw, all the way up to Park, uh, Park Place, um, turn those all into uh, reservation system-based parking spaces and it's really going to require that uh, people reserve in advance mm -hmm. you get a block of time it is free through the month of July but by, by the time this airs I suspect yeah we'll August have 2nd. August, mm -hmm. August, uh, past August 2nd which is the date that the $10 fee for some of the spaces will be instituted and some will be free as well some right? will still be free okay. so um, uh, take a look at our parking yeah. app and uh, of course online at our website we have all the information we want to make sure edu our residents are well educated uh, as well as visitors, so they know what to do when they come to visit us. And I was going to say, it's probably a process for visitors and residents. I know some of the spots are also designated for residents, that, that they can also reserve them. Um, and then really just a matter of people realizing, here's what we have to do, we do it the night before. And once they get into the rhythm, I think they'll know exactly Hopefully. how and to do it. Yeah. I agree. Hopefully people get comfortable. I know change is difficult. Yes. Uh, but hopefully it will work, and, and certainly... Um, will we'll improve sort of the driving and the parking situation that we have up there. We do have a lot of uh, high volume of cars oftentimes that go through that, that area and, and that can uh, turn into difficult situations in terms of, in terms of safety. And, and I, It was interesting that kind of happening as a result of the lockdowns when people just wanted to come outside and where did they come? They came to RPV. <laughs> absolutely. Well, why not? Why not? Oh, it's beautiful yes. here. Exactly. So I understand absolutely. and. We've seen a little bit of improvement, or I guess you know, less visitation locally, and we've been able to manage a little bit more successfully with just the pandemic as it's sort of uh, hopefully coming to a yes. close. Yes. And um, and nonetheless, though, we we still believe we need to have some of these measures in place to to properly manage uh, visitation to the preserve. Well, and that seems like that'll work out, and they can always also come up to City Hall. They That's can, right. They can park up here as well. That's part of it. We want to encourage people to come to our City Hall, and yes. if you haven't enjoyed the trails here, they're they're, they're really great. actually great mm -hmm. as well. So. Yes. And speaking of City Hall, we have a new Civic Center plan, an advisory committee, and they're actually looking for two more volunteers, residents that want to be involved. Tell us about that. Yes. So it's that time we have cycles for our committee members. Yes. Um, and uh, this is an opportunity for people interested in applying to, mm -hmm. you know, put in an application to the city uh, for our Civic Center Advisory Committee. Right. This is, all our committees in our commission are incredibly important sounding boards and decision-making boards in the case of Planning Commission for the City Council. But I'd say the Civic Center Advisory Committee is really critical uh, one for us at this particular juncture. Yes. As we look to take those next steps towards uh, reviewing a civic center plan that makes sense to our community and and hopefully engage the public in mm -hmm. a robust uh, public engagement process and outreach process to get more feedback on the direction that we're headed for the civic center uh, it was, committee. It was interesting. You were one of the people, a whole group of people, city staff and the council that walked the entire area 
And you know, when you really see the just the, the vastness and the largeness of this whole entire area, it would be perfect for a huge civic center to be here for really everyone in the community to enjoy. I, I'm just so excited about it because I really think this is uh, such a special location. Mm -hmm. All the more reason for us to be very thoughtful about what we put here, of course. Right. And I know that the Civic Center Advisory Committee is doing that. And so mm -hmm. the next big steps for them are to kind of refresh. We have a master plan that was at least conceptually put together. And they're going to review that again and make sure that we've got all of the elements that we'd like to proceed with. And then we're going to start working on getting cost estimates so we have a sense of, you know, at least general directional sense of cost for the project. So we can start thinking about what makes best sense for the city going forward. And I know Carolyn Petri, who's been working so hard in that committee, who chairs it, she had mentioned to us that they really, now that COVID has kind of gone down a little bit here, um, they want to start working on public outreach yes. to really get people's opinions and input into this, which I think is fantastic. Absolutely. absolutely. So uh, that's going to be a part of the next, I'd say, end of this year through probably the very first part of next year, hopefully we accomplish all three of those things. That's a huge project coming up for it, sure. It is. Yes. And another really exciting project that we're excited about is the first anniversary of the Sister City relationship with Sakura Japan. That's going to be coming up in just a few days. And how exciting that even though there was a pandemic, the city managed to form that bond and now you're going to celebrate a year. Give me your thoughts on uh, that. It, well, one, it's hard to believe that a year has already passed. I know, really. And uh, two, I'm yes, I'm delighted. Obviously, it's certainly with the Olympics going on, I'm sure we're yes. all hearing the reports from Japan. They're having their own challenges, as we did here recently, mm -hmm. of course, uh, with the, the pandemic. So as they work through that, we're pleased that we've been able to keep the bond and keep our correspondence strong. We've had a cultural exchange for the last year. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to read The Little Engine That Could for my yes. family, which to me is a classic uh, story that I thought would be worth sharing uh, for those uh, those uh, Japanese children and school That's children right. as well. So, um, and the mayor pro tem did a uh, barbecue recording. He did a barbecue, recording. yes, and, and Councilman Dida recently did a, a short history of Rancho Palos Verdes. So we're, we're coming along to just kind of share our things here in Rancho Palos Verdes with Japan. So. I think it's exciting. It really is. It is, and we have a uh, quite a symbol to unveil on the fourth. Yes, which is our new sign that mm -hmm. uh, depicts uh, the distance between Sakura City and uh, RPV, or distance to Sakura City, I should say. So that's going to be on City Hall's property, and we're going to uh, have a nice unveiling and ribbon cutting of that. Yes, uh, monument. I know some of the residents will be there, and for the people that that can't, they can watch the show post event because we'll have it right here on RPV TV and they can they can see everything that's going on but really logistically it's been amazing how you can put this together and have it going on you know hours later in Japan I guess or the next day and then you know you're doing all of your things here and it's just amazing it, it is uh, and our IT staff I just want to acknowledge them because uh, yes Really, we were one of the first cities going back to the beginning of the pandemic that was able to come out and have our council meetings in person and still adhere to the guidelines. Um, and that's because we have great IT staff. And mm -hmm. of course, Karina is working Amazing. hard with her team mm -hmm. to coordinate all the activities related to this Kura City event. Yep. So I um, want to acknowledge all of them for their work. It's going to be a special day. I'm just proud to be part of it. Yeah, it's going to be exciting, that's for sure. I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, and of course, all of our behind the scenes people are already working on it, so yes. it's it'll be great. <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. It'll be a lot and of fun. And thanks to RPV TV as well. So, well, you know what? It's a, it's a group effort here, Eric, right? It, is. it, it takes it takes it's a, a team village. Sport. <laughs> yes, it is, it's definitely. Um, another issue we wanted to talk about was were the unhoused persons in Rancho Palos Verdes and really this has been really such a problem all over California that each city has had to deal with in their own way and you and I were just kind of discussing that yes I know that that it is an issue here in the South Bay maybe not as much but but go ahead and and, and yes we explain that uh, we felt it was important to to agendize and put our city, city council agenda there's a discussion around how to deal with the unhoused mm -hmm. and uh, it was a, it was a really good robust discussion I suspect probably the first of many discussions our city, like many other cities, although our census uh, traditionally is incredibly low in mm -hmm. terms of uh, census and homeless individuals that may be in our city or reside typically in our city. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, we have noticed, and I've certainly gotten more reports and calls from, you know, questions from residents, concern about what to do, 
uh, who to call. And this was an opportunity, I think, to talk through, okay, do we have resources? How do we engage with the sheriff's department? What can they do? How does our ordinance, how do our ordinances rather deal with uh, this situation? And really just start, start to think about that. And I was proud of the discussion that we had as a council. It really sort of emphasized, you know, two components. One was certainly having an air of compassion and making sure we have adequate um, access to resources that we can direct these individuals to. But two is also to uh, maintain our quality of life in the community as well. And so, for example, we, we uh, reviewed an ordinance that we're going to consider in the next couple of council meetings that will make sure that it's clear that camping, overnight camping, currently it's only against uh, our laws to do so in the preserve. Okay. Uh, but we want to make sure that that's clearly uh, delineated um, and consider that as a council for uh, sidewalks and public spaces as well, uh, which means we have to work in close coordination with uh, you know local shelters to make sure that there's um, adequate access to beds and and uh, making sure that individuals who are interested have a place to go right. should they desire it. So that's a big part of that. Yes. And our sheriff's department's been great. Uh, we've been working really closely, Captain Powers, and his deputies are engaging several of these folks. Um, and offering resources and not all times will they accept them. So it's just, it's a matter of perseverance and sure. I think it's a matter of education as well. So uh, I was glad that we had some preliminary discussions and um, for those individuals in the community that are interested, you can get more information at the LA Homeless Outreach Portal okay. at la-hop.org uh, or also if you, uh, want to make a report, you can also call the Sheriff's Department, 310-539-1661. So those are a couple of immediate resources. But we are working closely now with staff to make sure that we've got some resources uh, indicated inside of our web, um, our uh, website as well. And I think that's so important because I wouldn't have known, where do you call, who do you reach out to? And I think a lot of residents feel the same way, just what do we do? Sure. The Sheriff's a good place to start, mm -hmm. and they're they're working very closely with other resources, social services, et cetera. So right. if you don't know where to go, I, my, my, my advice is, you know, contact Sheriff's Department first and foremost, and they can help direct um, other resources as needed. They're fantastic. They are. They really are. And then another point of discussion is the housing and local land use legislation, which I know is a big issue. I know it's a little complex. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Yeah, so I, I, um, I want to acknowledge, um, you know, we've had, uh, as a city, as a council, we've responded uh, in support and in opposition to various legislation that's been proposed. Uh, Sacramento, our, our state uh, level leaders, have been quite active in proposing legislation around housing issues in particular over the last couple of legislative sessions. And uh, there's been some that we've been opposed to and that we've voiced as a council we've been opposed to, and most of those uh, pieces of legislation are proposing taking some of the local authority away from zoning related and density related issues that we believe we want to uh, continue to manage effectively mm -hmm. locally. Um, and that's rather important in our community, of course, because we're in a high fire severity zone. Right. We have to be mindful of ingress, egress, infrastructure needs to support the population that we have, and there's just a lot of issues related to it. And so. We actually constructed uh, a, a housing platform that we sent out to various leaders that sort of summarizes, um, as a council, uh, what our position is. And it, and it draws attention to, you know, opposition to certain legislation that uh, usurps, you know, more local land use controls. However, it also calls attention to uh, other aspects of the housing crisis in ways that we believe that we can work collaboratively with the state. And I'll just mention a few. Yeah. Um, Project Home Key, we think projects like that or projects that are using existing uh, infrastructure um, are an opportunity to, to potentially um, incentivize and, and building new housing. Um, anything that certainly promotes uh, social services, mental health services, mm -hmm. um, of course, housing, homelessness, housing, and affordable housing, I want to make sure that the distinction is clear because they're, yes. not, they're not synonymous. Right. But nonetheless, the, the issues oftentimes can be complex and um, those extra resources to make sure that 
you know, individuals are receiving the support they need are, are critical as well. So we, we voice support for any of those kinds of programs. Mm -hmm. And certainly anything that um, promotes collaboration between cities or the state. Now, for instance, uh, our state senator, Senator Allen, has proposed something called a housing trust. So, you know, an opportunity to uh, p potentially uh, do some sort of kind of trap cap and trade model to ensure that housing is, is accounted for in the areas that it's needed uh, and that cities all contribute, mm -hmm. uh, but in a way that makes sense, in a way that's collaborative amongst cities. So there's just uh, a couple of thoughts that I wanted to, to kind of acknowledge amongst other things that we have um, articulated and supported. But I, I think it's most important for residents simply to um, educate themselves. So we right. do have a legislative corner of our RPV website. Uh, so take a look. And I encourage people advice. to reach out to um, their assembly members, their state senator, uh, and other leaders to just better understand and educate themselves on what's being proposed and how it could affect, in our case, certainly the city of RPV. And I guess for every city, it really is, is different. So you have to learn about what goes on in your own city and, you know, see what the results are. Absolutely. You know, so that's uh, that's important. And really, the website is such a great resource. The rpvca.gov website, it, everything is everything there. Everything is there. Yes, yes it really yes. is. It's so helpful. Absolutely. Okay, and then um, finally, we want to remind people it's still summer, and we still have concerts and movies going on in the park at the Civic Center. Yep. And, you know, we want people that are here in RPV to just enjoy these things because they're so much fun. I made it to the, uh, the Trolls World Tour. Okay. And I uh, had a chance to say a few words to the audience, and I oh. had a lot of fun giving a quiz on trolls to the kids that were there. How fun! So I had a, I had a great time doing that, although I was really sort of semi-confident on my trolls knowledge. So <laughs> I was lucky to have kids around me making sure that you know my answers were correct as I was I was stating them. Now, how so. is your Jurassic Park knowledge? Oh, uh, that'll be upcoming. Not as strong. <laughs> I'll have to. I'll have to make sure. You might have to watch the movie a couple of times quiz. before that one. Yeah, but really, so. just so much fun that the city goes out of their way to make sure that there are these kind of events that the residents can really enjoy together, and especially now being outside. And you know, it's just. I just think it's wonderful. Oh, I love the series that we've come up with uh, with staff this year. To uh, I know and we've always been active, but I'd mm -hmm. say we're even more active, and for it's sure. certainly perfect timing for that. Uh, for us to enjoy that civic engagement and activity. So as you acknowledge the movies, and mm -hmm. I know uh, many people are aware now too, but the, the two concerts in the park yes. that are fast approaching us as well. I can say the 4th of July, I enjoyed the band that was there as well. That was, they were great. But nothing like being at, again, Civic Center yep, property. Exactly. Enjoying the space, uh, bringing your family and having, you know, in this case, a couple of good evenings. So uh, yeah, very, take a look, come out. Yeah, it was awesome, that's for sure. Um, Anything else that you wanted to get to? No, just a big thank you to oh. you, Maria, and to the it's RPV team. This is always a wonderful experience to, to make sure we're keeping the public up to speed on what's happening in our city. Well, I think it's great that we always have an opportunity to have dialogue about so many things because it just gives people, like you said, an opportunity to learn a little bit more, be reminded of the great website and just really the great information that you all supply. So it's great. All right, well, Mayor, we will see you again next month. Thank you so much for being with us. And, of course, thank you for watching. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time on City Talk.